Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, classmates. So our main topic for this evening is the effective learning competencies. So before we discuss about the importance of effective targets, let us first discuss what is effect. Effect is a number of non-cognitive variables such as a person's attitude, interest, and values. So according to William James, 2003, the reason why it is important to assess, assess effect are, first, educators should be interested in assessing effective variables because these variables are excellent predictors of students' future behavior. Second, is teachers should assess effect to remind themselves that there's more to being a successful teacher than being than helping students obtain high scores or an achievement test. And the third one is information regarding students affect can help teachers teach more effectively on a day-to-day -day basis. Importance of effective target. First importance is the students are more proficient in problem solving if they enjoy what they do. We all know that students who enjoy what they're doing learn fast and best if they like what they do. Second is students who are in good mood and emotionally involved are more likely to pay attention to information, remember it meaningfully and apply it. And as we observe that those students who are who have problems at homes cannot focus in their studies so those who are in good mood and um in their homes they can bring it in their schools the third one is too much anxiety obstructs the learning and greater motivation is necessary for maximum performance those students who are well supported, those students who are good at their homes, they can they will tend or likely to perform best in their studies. And lastly, a more positive environment fosters good students' engagement in learning than a classroom with a negative climate. So these are the importance of the tar effective target. Positive, effective traits and skills are essential for first, effective learning, second, being involved and productive member of our society, third, preparing for occupational and vocational satisfaction and productivity, for example, work habits, willingness to learn, and interpersonal skills. Next is maximizing the motivation to learn at present at the same time in the future. Lastly, preventing students from dropping out of school. Effective Traits and Learning Targets Effective Traits and Learning Targets The word effective refers to a variety of traits and dispositions that are different from knowledge, reasoning, and skills, according to Han 1995. Technically speaking, this term means the emotions or feelings that one has towards someone or something. Quote unquote, effective. Nevertheless, attitudes, values, self concept, citizenship, and other traits are usually considered to be non cognitive, include more than emotions or feelings. These are the different affective traits and its corresponding description. Number one is attitudes. Number two is interest. Number three is values. Number four is opinions. Number five is preferences. Number six is motivation. Number seven is academic self-concept. And number eight is a locus of self-control. Number one, attitudes. It is a predisposition. What they mean by predisposition, it is to be more likely to behave in a particular way or to be affected by a particular condition. It is to respond favorably or unfavorably to specified situations, concepts, objects, institutions, or person. 
And number two is interest. It is a personal preference for a certain kinds of activities. For example, I am interested in sports or interested in reading or whatever it is the students are interested at. Number three is values. It is the importance, worth, or usefulness of modes or conduct and in states of except existence. Number four is opinions. It is the beliefs about specific occurrences and situations. What are opinions toward a certain topic or towards a certain subject or toward a certain object as well. Number five is preferences. It is a desire to select one object over another. So that is understandable. Number six, motivation. It is a desire and willingness to be engaged in behavior, including intensity of involvement. So what is your motivation for studying? What is your motivation to doing such activities and so on? And academic self-concept, it is the self-perception of competence in school and learning. And lastly, the locus of self-control. Of it is a self-perception of whether success and failure is controlled by the students or by external influences. Number nine is the emotional development. It is the growth or change in awareness of emotions and ability to regulate emotional expression. It is where we learn to manage our emotions. Number ten is social relationship. It is the nature of interpersonal interactions and functioning in a group setting so where we can socialize with others. And number 11 is altruism. It is the willingness and propensity to help others. And number 12 is moral development. It is the attainment of ethical principles that guide decision making and behavior. And lastly, classroom development, it is the nature of feeling, tones, and interpersonal relationship. Learning targets. Number one, attitude targets. Macmillan 1980 defines attitudes as an internal state that influence what students are likely to do. It cannot be seen because it is an internal state that influences us. And the internal state can in some degree determine positive or negative or favorable or unfavorable reaction toward an object, situation, person, or group of objects, general environment, or group of persons. In learning institution, attitude is contingent on subjects, teachers, other students, homework, and objects or persons. So there is a positive attitude and a negative attitude. In a positive attitude, it is in learning, for example, in math, science, English, and other subjects, or doing assignments, or following classroom rules, and respecting our teachers. A negative attitude is, for example, is cheating, bullying, cutting classes, and dropping out. So there are three components of attitudes, or shall we say, contributing factor. First is the affective component. What is affective component? Affective component consists of the emotion or feeling associated with a person or an object. For example, uh, personally, I have this um, schema or about I have this impression or feeling when it comes to um, math subjects. I really have this uh, some sort of an easy or fear of um, answering math problems or math questions when it comes to the subject. I don't know why. And the next is cognitive component. It is an evaluative belief such as thinking something is valuable useful, worthless, and etc. It's all about in our cognitive part. And lastly, in behavioral component, it is actually responding in a positive way about a certain 
um, things or certain objects or certain person. It is describes about our behavior. Number two in learning targets is value targets. It refers to a condition and aspects of oneself and the kind of world that we want, such as a safe life, freedom, happiness, social acceptance, and wisdom, and etc. For example, we go to school because we want to have a successful life. That's why um, we endure a lots of hardships in, in our study because we want and we dreamed of a successful and happy life in the future. And the mode of conduct are manifested in what the person believes is appropriate, or right, and needed in everyday existence, such as we should be honest, we should be loving towards others, we should be a responsible people and helpful towards other people as well so these are the different or the sample value targets number one is honesty it is a the students should learn to value honesty in their dealing with others with other people and next is the integrity students should firmly observe their own code of values for example as a student we know that cheating is bad so uh, students who have integrity will not cheat regardless if the teacher is around or not because they know they value their code of values that cheating is bad next is the justice students should support the view that all citizens should be recipients of equal justice from government law enforcement and agencies not just the justice is not just for the rich people to those people who can afford but also to the poor people who cannot afford so there should be an equal justice for all free lastly the freedom students should be able that should believe that democratic countries must provide the maximum level to their citizens they are not limited because we are not a communist country so we have an equal rights not just freedom is for all because that's what we want and that's a right number three in learning targets is the motivation target it implies that motivation is determined by students' expectations, their belief about whether they are likely to be successful in the future and the relevance of the outcome. So what is expectations? It refers to the self-efficacy of the students and values are self-perception of the importance of the performance. There are two kinds of motivation. Number one is intrinsic motivation. It is when students do something or engage themselves in activities because they find the activities interesting, enjoyable, or challenging. For example, the students want to join a public speaking competition or a spelling bee because they are interested in it and they find it enjoyable and they find it challenging. And the second one is the extrinsic motivation. It is doing something because it leads reward or punishment. Uh, for example, we study because we want to pass the exam because if we don't, we'll, we'll be dropped out or our scores will not pass. So that is an extrinsic motivation. Number four in learning targets is the academic self-concept targets. Self-concept and self-esteem are multidimensional. Each person has a self-description in each area that form one self-concept or self-image. I have these different observations in my classmates. Some are so um, hardworking in studying, some are just 
chill and go with the flow and some are just um, come what may but some of them are those who study so hard because they're maintaining something they maintain their grades they maintain their um, academic position and their scholarship as well so and moreover individuals have a sense of self-regards self-affirmation and self-worth in each area it depends upon them number five in learning targets is the social relationship targets it is a complex set of interaction skills including identification of an appropriate response to social indication defines social relationship there are two kinds of social relationship first is the peer relationship it is showing interest in others listening to peers sharing to a group contributing to group activities for example is students will share the ideas in a group in a small group discussion just like we did in every um in every subject where in the teacher grouped us and have a small group discussion and the second one is the cooperative skills it is sharing collaborating listening volunteering ideas and suggestion supporting and accepting other ideas taking turns and criticizing constructively for example is students will demonstrate that they are able to negotiate with others and compromise they do not just value their own ideas but the other ideas as well number six in learning targets is the classroom environment target in every classroom, there is a unique climate that is felt at every point in time. Some manifest a comfortable atmosphere, others have relaxed and productive ambience. As a result, there are classes that are happy and content while others are serious and tense due to effect of the classroom climate. It follows that students behave differently as dictated also by the classroom climate. Some shows warm and supportive class while others registers a cold and rejecting. We all experience this in different um, subjects that we have, in different teachers that facilitates us, right? And these are the characteristics of the different classroom environments. First is the affiliation, the extent to which students like and accept each other especially to those um, in the first day of school. Students or um, especially the new one uh, would like to be accepted and would like to be feel belonged. And next is the involvement, the extent to which students are interested in and engaged in learning. They're not just those students who are passive in learning, but they are those who are active in learning. Now, third is, task orientation the extent to which classroom activities are focused in the completion of academic task next is the cohesiveness the extent to which students share norms and expectations next is the favoritism whether each student enjoys the same privilege but most of the time favoritism is been practiced especially in public schools in elementary i've experienced this and friction to the extent to which students bicker with one another and next is the formality the emphasis on imposing rules this is um being um i observe this a lot of times in college in college next is the communication the extent to which communication among students with teacher is honest and authentic next is the warmth the extent to which students care about each other and show concern so these are the characteristics of classroom environments good evening ma'am good evening classmates our topic for this evening is about the effective domain of the taxonomy of educational objectives. The taxonomy of educational objectives has three learning domains. 
namely the cognitive it talks about our knowledge our thinking and the second is the psychomotor the physical skills talks about what we can do and lastly the affective domains talks about our attitude and our feelings our focus on this topic is the affective domain so what is affective domain the affective domain includes the manner in which we deal with things emotionally such as our feelings values appreciation, enthusiasms, motivations, and attitudes. Although difficult to measure, they can still be objectives or goals. It describes our feelings, likes, and dislikes, our experiences, as well as the resulting behavior. The affective domain's objective are the following. First, the emotional development talks about basic emotions, self-conscious emotions, attachments, temperament and personality, and the self-concept or self-esteem. And the second is the social development, talks about the relationships, the social competencies. And the last one is the moral development, talks about the moral reasoning and the morality. David Grafwool, 1972, proposed a five-level taxonomy of objectives. So these are the following. First is receiving. Second is responding. Third is valuing. Fourth is organizing. And lastly, characterizing by value. Let us first discuss the first level. The receiving. In receiving, the student is passively aware that the thing exists. It is focused during instruction or project. It is being aware of or sensitive to the existence of the certain ideas, material, or phenomena. So the verb examples are to accept, to ask, to choose, to describe, and to follow, and so on. So the example objective of this is to listen to others with respect and listen for and remember the name of newly introduced people. Next is responding. In responding, the student is showing an active interest in something. It requires an active participation on the part of the learner. It attends and reacts to a particular phenomenon Learning outcome may emphasize compliance in responding, willingness to respond, or satisfaction in responding. So the verb's examples are to answer, to assist, to aid, to comply, to conform, to discuss, and so on. To give an example of this is the student participate in class discussions, or the student gives a presentation. In this level, the student did not just listen, but he or she respond the information that he listened to. Next is valuing. In valuing, the student sees worth or value in the activity. The student is motivated not by the teacher to comply, but by his underlying value guiding the behavior. It is where the worth or value present attaches to a particular object, phenomenon, or behavior. This ranges from simple acceptance to the more complex state of commitment. Valuing is based on the internalization of a set of specified values or clues to these values. So the verb examples are to complete, to demonstrate, to differentiate, to explain, to follow, to join, and so on. So to give a decided example of this is the, the student demonstrates belief in the democratic process or the student shows the ability to solve problems. Next is organizing. In organizing, 
the student relate the value to those already held and bring it into harmonious and internally consistent philosophy. In this level, the student organizes values into priorities by contrasting different values, resolving conflicts between them, and creating a unique value system. The emphasis is on comparing relating and synthesizing values the verb examples are to adhere to alter to arrange to combine to complete and so on to give an example is that the student recognizes the need for balance between freedom and responsible behavior or he or she accepts responsibility for one's behavior. Lastly, the characterization. In characterization, the student acts consistently in accordance with the values he or she has internalized. In this level, the student has a value system that controls their behavior. The behavior is pervasive, consistent, predictable, and most importantly, characteristic of a learner. Instructional objectives are concerned with the student's general patterns of adjustment, personal, social, and emotional. So the verb examples are to act, to discriminate, to display, to influence, to modify, to perform, to practice, and so on. So the side example, the student shows self-reliance with when working independently, or he or she cooperates in group activities, displays teamwork. And lastly, values people for what they are, not how they look. In summary of taxonomy of educational objectives, in receiving, it talks about the student's willingness to pay attention and in responding, it talks about the student reacts voluntarily or complies. And in valuing, it is where the student accepts the idea or the phenomena. And in the organization, it is where the student rearrange his or her value system in accordance to what he or she receives and responded to and values to. And lastly, in characterization, it talks about the student incorporates value into life. It talks about he or she applied what she learned, he or she learned from the idea or the information or the phenomena. So the, the follow, these are the different the five levels of educational objective by David Prath Wu. for listening everyone. God bless you.